What's going on, guys? Today we're going to go through a couple of things. The first is an LNF Cobalt. The customer complains of a hard to start after refueling, and it also has a couple of codes. So we're going to run through that, and then we're going to go through Canes, Redline. We're going to install springs and cams, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So okay, we so this customer brought his LNF in. He said that it has a hard time starting after refuel. It's also got a fuel tank pressure sensor high input. So what that means is the PCM expects a certain value. It's out of the threshold of what's acceptable. And when it runs the test, it's not copacetic with what's going on. So, like I said, it's got a, uh, a code for a fuel tank pressure high input. And it also had, at one point, high purge flow. So, knowing that it's a GM and these are pretty common for it, I went into the data list where you can see the fuel tank pressure in inches right here. Sorry, there's a little bit of a glare. And you see that it's 0 0.11, 0 0.13. And as soon as we start it, see that it instantly goes to negative 4.7 so this purge valve actually is sucking fuel vapor from the tank constantly so if we pull this off this should be closed unless it's being commanded and it's unplugged, and you can still hear that it's sucking. You can hear the pitch of the engine change. So, I believe that it is going to take a purge valve solenoid, and that should clear up his hard to start after refueling. There you go, you can hear it change. And it's unplugged, so the PCM no longer has control over it. So this is actually using engine vacuum, and it's sucking the fuel tank pressure and is changing the value and that's why we're getting both of those codes. So we're gonna replace that purge and recheck. Okay, so we got the EVAP purge solenoid replaced and we've got it hooked to the scanner. And just for a quick check, we're gonna look at the fuel tank pressure vacuum. Once we start it. And as before, you would notice that this value right here would go up and it is sitting exactly where it should. So I'm confident that the issue is fixed and we're going to clear the codes, give it for a test drive, um, check the EVAP data, run the, the EVAP test, and uh, should be good to go. I'll show you guys real quick. This is the old one. Here's the new one. It's just a quick... Get started on Kane's red line, get the valve springs replaced. We're waiting on cams. Gonna get the blower off and start servicing it, get the injectors cleaned, and uh, go along for the ride. Okay, so we got the injectors out of the way. We got the supercharger off. We are going to now remove the cams and start working on the uh, valve springs. So we're going to put this at top dead center on cylinder four, cylinder one, either or, and uh, start from there. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So first we're gonna remove the timing chain tensioner in the back. And we're gonna remove this guide. And then we're gonna take out the camshaft position sensor housing and the plate, and then we're going to remove the camshafts. So. Next, we're going to break the cam gears loose. They are 18 millimeter, and we're gonna hold the cam with a wrench. So 
So we've got the top guide out, the timing chain tensioner, the front guide bolt, broke the cams loose. Um, as you noticed, I had to take some tension off of the intake cam just so I could get the slack in the chain so I can get the gear out on the exhaust side. And like I said, we're going to take these housings off and get these cams removed. So occasionally people are curious on how to get these cams out. These end caps are actually doweled and sometimes you can rock them back and forth, but if they won't come off, you can tap them with a little bit of force for to get them unseated. You never want to get underneath it with a screwdriver. You can damage the mating surface, so avoid that at all cost. There you go. So as you can see, all the lifters are out. He is replacing them with new. Uh, anytime that you take one apart to put cams in it, especially if they've got any kind of miles on them, it's a good idea to replace them. They do actually wear out internally and they can collapse and cause lack of lift and duration on the camshaft, so you will have a loss of power. Um, occasionally, they are hard to get out. I usually use a magnet to pull on them. If they don't come out, you can get underneath the neck of it right here and you can kind of uh, pry up on it a little bit it doesn't take much force occasionally they're pretty stuck and you might have to use needle nose or something like that to get them out um, but you know like I said we're going to replace them anyway so it's not a concern We've got everything laid out and now we are going to get the air compressor we're going to get a leak down tester and we're going to put compressed air into the cylinder and that will hold the valve shut while we replace the valve springs. Awesome. Okay, so we have the leak down tester in. Here's the hose. We'll be hooking this to the tester. Um, it's gonna get a little loud with the air compressor, so I probably won't record while I'm doing it. Um, but I have all the spark plugs removed. Cylinder four is at top dead center. Uh, obviously, since there's no cams in it, it's not on a specific stroke, except for the fact that it is at top dead center. Um, it's a good idea to do that just in case you were have a, uh, a valve get hung open and maybe fall. Uh, most of the time it's not going to have enough room to fall completely through and you could, you know, worst case scenario, pull it back up. Um, we are using this OTC valve spring compressor. It bolts to the cylinder head and then you use this to press down on the spring. And then I use a magnetic screwdriver to pull the keepers out and then we'll remove the spring remove the seal and install in reverse order. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so we're waiting on cams and we've got the lash, excuse me, lash adjusters soaking in oil. You should do this for a while to let them get completely full. Uh, that way you don't have any kind of issue with it tossing a rocker on startup. I have had that happen. So you do wanna let those soak for a while. Uh, so we turned attention to the M62 we are going to port this inlet so he can run this LS4 throttle body. As you can see, there's a pretty big difference. And if you don't port the inlet and you run this, it will hit the edge of this blower case. So what he's done is he's been running this adapter plate, which, I mean, it works. However, you still have the obstruction inside the blower. So it's best to open this up and get as much airflow as you can in there. So that's what we're gonna do next. And we're going to replace his case bearings. 
as these are also a common failure, especially when you start running smaller pulleys on the M62. You can see a little bit of scratching on the case, nothing too serious. We'll get this cleaned up, get those replaced, and uh, get this thing back together. Okay, so we've got the lash adjusters back in, we've got the injectors back in, uh, we've got the rockers back on. The lash adjusters and rockers were sitting in oil for about a day. Uh, while we were doing some other things, getting the supercharger ported, uh, we got the uh, the inlet done. We've got the new case bearings, and now he no longer needs an adapter to run this LS4. So that is ready to go back on as soon as we get this done. But um, we're gonna prep the cams, get those put back in. We're gonna put a little bit of oil on them and torque down these cam bolts to 89 inch pounds, and uh, I'm gonna get this thing running tonight, hopefully. So we'll see what we got. So all these are torqued down. Um, I worked in a circular motion. I slowly brought these down. Uh, you want to do that anytime you're installing a cam. Um, you don't want to just run this down and then you know work its way because it will bring the camshaft up. And I don't know if it's true, but they say you can actually break a camshaft to that regardless um, to get the right clamping force. And the way you should be doing it is starting in the center, working your way out back and forth and like I said these torque to 89 inch pounds we are now going to install the end caps now one thing that you want to use underneath those is anaerobic sealant this is uh, a sealant that will not set up until it's in the absence of oxygen so it will stay in liquid form until these are torqued down um, got a nice smooth coat on it nothing too crazy uh, you definitely don't want to use RTV. I have done that in the past. Learned my lesson. It does leak. And like I said, if you use too much, it can squish out and get into the oiling system. This stuff isn't going to hurt it. Like I said, it'll stay liquid until it's, uh, it's set up underneath there. So we're going to get those installed, and then we're going to time it. Um, I'm actually going to time this without pulling the front cover. Um, this isn't for beginners but it is doable if you're comfortable with it. Um, on the factory balancer, there's going to be a notch on the timing cover and in the back of the crank pulley. So I'm gonna line that up. That's gonna let me know that I'm at top dead center. I've got the camshafts at 10 and two. And once we go to time it, it'll be exactly where we need to. And you can see where the, the keyways are. They're lining up just like they will when it's timed. And uh, then I'll get the tensioner back in and get the supercharger back on. So we're going to do that now. All right, we have the timing guide on. We have the cam gears on and torqued along with the timing chain tensioner. And now we are going to reinstall the camshaft position sensor. Now, there's a lot of differing ideas on how this is supposed to be timed. Um, if you look in the service manual, sometimes it is incorrect. Sometimes they say that it's supposed to be cylinder one at about four o'clock or something like that. Uh, but whenever you time this engine, you actually are timing with the engine uh, cylinder four at top dead center compression stroke. So you'll have your camshafts pointing in towards each other, each other sorry. And then you are going to line up the male hex, the little dash on it with the housing, just like so and then you're going to slide it into the end of the camshaft. Uh, make sure that it doesn't rotate while doing it. Uh, this is a weighted reluctor inside here, so it's it's easy for it to, to kind of fall, so keep an eye on that. And then uh, just torque it down, and that's all there is to it. Got it all put back together, started right up. Sounds good. Sounds like it's in time correctly. I'm gonna have to get a tune and uh, wrap this one up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and like, share, and subscribe. Cliche, I know. But if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know.